Hello and welcome to Voice of the Fat Mantis. You're watching my review of Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 3. We should hide a title for it, but it seems that something you might learn in basic writing class is that you should title your episodes or your poems or your short stories a feeling of what it's actually about. I think sometimes they don't know. Now, by no means am I giving this a bad review. Actually, I'd say that's his best episode we have seen thus far. I just feel like it's still beating around the bush, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. But before we do, I'd love it if you like, shared, and subscribed to Voice of the Fat Mantis. Also, feel free to comment. I love fielding your comments, especially your snarky ones. Now that we've gotten that out of the way... So this episode starts off where they are. He's hanging out with Le Leia and Leia starts opening her mouth. And I'm like, here we go. More Phantom Menace stuff. This time around, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with Leia's contribution to this episode. She did a good job showing her smarts, her future leadership as the Princess Leia we know, and just being less annoying than she was in the episode prior. So she was actually pleasant to be on there. There were a lot of great moments in this episode, particularly like when they're hitchhiking and they get on the back of a pickup of a seemingly nice alien man, but it turns out he's got a bumper sticker of the Empire back there and he's a Empire fanboy Boy. He even picks up some Imperial soldiers, which makes for a weird, fun, tense moment. And it was pretty cool as they pretended to be father and daughter aboard this vessel, trying not to get arrested by the stormtroopers. That was fun. And then later on, they eventually have to get into a fight and move on. They finally propel the plot forward. Obi-Wan finally gets to pop his lightsaber, as they call it, and actually even duel Vader. Vader is actually very proactive, and things are happening, including the introduction of a new character, Talia, who apparently is a traitor to the Empire, and she's working within the system. I love certain Easter eggs. They did like a name drop. Quinlan Voss was even mentioned. He had graffitied along the wall, and it was awesome to watch Obi-Wan be happy to see his etchings there and be like, oh my god, Quinlan's alive. And to see him smile, I gotta say, Ewan McGregor is killing it in this part. He is by far the best part of this entire thing. I am giving this a good review, this episode, absolutely. There were some negatives onto it. Now, I don't know if Deborah Chow has an action stunt director team that a lot of Marvel movies have. Kevin Feige tends to not let the directors actually do their own action sequences. They've got their own boys for this. And I feel that Deborah Chow probably needs it. In episode two, the shootout on top of the roof was kind of... It lacked urgency. It didn't seem intense at all, and the movements were kind of slow. And that continued when he fought the stormtroopers at the laser border. And it was pretty cool when that guy got cut in half. Our Enter our Wilhelm scream. It was also kind of slow and low, low risk. And then also later on, even when he fights Darth Vader... There was no sense of urgency and therefore all intensity left. Now, I loved the ending of that sequence. He gets branded and he gets humiliated by Darth Vader. I really enjoyed that. But there are these moments where they're clashing and he goes away from him and then he just kind of like hops away and he's only like three feet away and he feels like there's a reason to walk and not run. There should be a high intensity. The Lord of Evil, Darth Vader is chasing you, man. Move those legs, old man. That's what I, I, I don't understand what's going on there. Also, there was one moment that I just really, I found myself yelling at the screen. Talia, who already agreed she would not leave Leia's side and she would protect Leia, five minutes later abandons a 10-year-old who the entire empire is hunting to go help Obi-Wan when Obi-Wan said he would be fine. You don't leave a 10-year-old alone. That's, that, that is... Hello? Uh, hello? Yeah, th that was I illogical. It was all to set Leia up to be kidnapped again. Princess Leia, the most kidnapped princess in the Disney universe. Heck, in every universe. I've never seen it more, or damsel in distress, more in need of rescuing than Princess Leia. They're probably going to do a Disney Plus series about all the other times she got kidnapped when she was a teenager. Leading up to New Hope. Cut it out. Give her something else to do. Another thing that I have a problem with this series is that it's not expanding the mythology of Star Wars. At least the other series attempted to do that. Now, of course, Boba Fett was a total miss on that part. They added things, but there were times where we were like, did we really need the mods? 
I mean, really. This d does not attempt to do anything. We already know what Inquisitors were. We've already seen them. They're an overly used trope at this point. And we've seen these Stormtroopers, and there's nothing being added. No new alien races or any weird rules to the galaxy that we need to understand. And I just kind of wish the series would do that. That's what I'm here for. I don't know who's in charge over there at Lucasfilm, but they keep giving us projects where the characters are reluctant, whatever their archetype is. An example is, in this, Obi-Wan is a reluctant Jedi. However, we paid our ticket admission to see a Jedi be a Jedi, just as we paid our admission to Boba Fett to see him be a criminal, not a reluctant criminal. And it's really sapping the fun out of these series. Just I understand, hopefully it is halfway through the series. He just met his defeat at the hands of Vader. Maybe that will make him snap out of it. But he wasn't he was just a shell of the man that he once was. And I don't know what it's going to take. Maybe the disappearance of Leia will get him back into that. But I need this man to be active. Show us the Obi-Wan that we saw in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, man. I know you have it in you. You need to beat Dar Darth Vader just one more time. Also, I don't understand why they're giving Cassie and Andor 12 episodes and Obi-Wan only 6. Does it make any logical sense to you? And yo, if Cassie and Andor better, is a better production and story... and. Uh, then Obi-Wan, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's it's like they're trying to disrespect our, our old greats, man. At least we still have the Mandalorian. That will never let me down. But ultimately, I do think that this episode is a better, much improvement on what we saw before. But the real question is, what did you guys think of it? Please let me know down in the comments. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And keep tuning in to Voice of the Fat Mantis for more reviews, analysis of Obi-Wan, Star Wars, Star Trek, all things nerdy, and all the news that's fit to print. Until next time, ciao. For now.